In this video, you'll discover the top causes of inflammation. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community so I can help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about the causes of inflammation. You know, and if you've heard me talk about inflammation before, you know that I'm talking about a systemic inflammatory issue at a cellular level in the body. Now, when we look at the 30, 40 plus trillion cells in our body, essentially what we have to look at is what is causing them to become inflammatory. So that's what we're going to discuss in this video. And then, of course, we're going to discuss all the health conditions that come out of it. So we're going to talk about some of the top uh, causes of inflammation and then the health problems that they cause. So let's jump right into this. So the first major cause is environmental pollutants. Okay, when we look at environmental pollutants, we're thinking of chemicals that you're cleaning your home with, chemicals that are in the workplace, chemicals that you're putting on your body, right? How many beauty products are you using that is loaded with chemicals, different lotions that's loaded with chemicals, okay? Now, when we think back in the time of our ancestors, they literally didn't come across chemicals on a regular basis. But in today's world, you literally are being ambushed with hundreds of chemicals. And so environmental pollutants are a really big deal. And so we have to make sure that we're avoiding these at all costs. I've worked with so many patients that it's just kind of that one final exposure to a certain chemical that just put them over the edge and now their life is just not the same as they know it. I've had that happen so many times where people, you know, whether they're using a pesticide or they're using, you know, some sort of herbicide on their lawn, next thing you know, they just have their life taken out from underneath them and then their health is destroyed. And so we have to make sure that we're not putting these different uh, environmental pollutants in our lifestyle, we have to make sure that we're taking them out. Okay, We have to make sure that we're using better beauty products, better cleaning products, and making better choices in that area. Now, the next here is alcohol and drugs. Okay, Alcohol is pretty obvious. It's excessive use of alcohol. Okay, So we're thinking alcoholic. All right, I did another video where I put alcohol and I put chronic use and people were saying, well, you're saying, how can you say that nobody can ever drink alcohol? I'm not saying that. I'm saying chronic use of alcohol. Okay, And then next, drugs. Okay, so we're not just talking about the recreational drugs, but we're also talking about pharmaceutical drugs. Now, they also cause a huge amount of pollution in the body as a result of uh, toxicity. And so, you know, these different um, drugs, not only do they wear down the kidneys and the liver, these organs that are part of the detox detoxification system in the body, but they cause a lot of uh, inflammation in the body because they bec the body becomes very toxic as a result of taking them. And so, you know, we have to make sure that when we look at these different you know, painkillers and all these things that we're actually limiting them and making sure that we're taking them responsibly. Next is food sensitivities. Now, when we look at food sensitivities, we have to really be able to understand that there's a difference between food allergies and food sensitivities. Now, food allergies are going to be like a peanut allergy. You know, you eat some peanuts, your throat closes up, you need to be rushed to the hospital. It's a big deal, right? Now, food sensitivities are more like the silent killers, right? Because it's like the foods that you're eating on a regular basis that in mo most cases should be good for you. Like, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's a strawberry. Let's say it's blueberries. Let's say it's something that that's very, very healthy, but yet you consume it and your body does not like it. And then as a result, it drives a lot of inflammation in the body. Now, food sensitivities, once again, are different from allergies because in many cases, you don't even know that you're having a reaction to them for, it could be up to 24 hours later where you see a result from that reaction. So you know, if you wake up the next day and you're just like, wow, my brain's not working and I feel terrible, there's a good chance that something that you ate the day before has, is causing that issue. And so we have to look at food sensitivities, know that they drive inflammation in the body. In many cases, you'll get very, very minor symptoms, maybe a little bit of an itchy throat, maybe you'll get an itchy skin, maybe you'll get a, you know, small, uh, you know, rash-like uh, symptoms that start to pop up on the body. So in many cases, they're not huge symptoms that arise. So we have to make sure that we're looking for those little things that uh, would make us aware that we're eating a food that is not sitting well with our body, even an upset stomach. And so we have to make sure that we look for all those things. Next on our list is sugar, okay? One thing that inflammation loves in the body is sugar. And so we have to make sure that we're taking sugar out of our diet in order to kill that inflammation down. And when I put people on my Heal Yourself Cookbook and Diet Guide, essentially it pulls sugar out of the diet. And just as a result of 
pulling sugar out of the diet along with removing other toxic foods, but a major one is pulling that sugar out of the diet. Essentially, you know, people start to just see a huge health transformation. So if you're someone who's consuming a lot of sugar, then you got to make sure that you pull that out. And that's one of the ways that the ketogenic diet, of course, is so powerful amongst, you know, reasons like you're putting a lot of fat in the body, which most people are fat deficient. And so pull that sugar out. It's going to kill down that inflammation. Next is bad fats. Okay. A lot of people are consuming a lot of bad fats. When you think of any fats that you're getting at a restaurant, think of bad fats. Okay. You're thinking of all the fried foods. You're thinking of, um, the different oils that they put in your food. Typically, they're putting in bad fats simply because they don't want to pay for the good stuff. Okay, good fats would include like coconut oil, olive oil, av avocado oil. You know, we have to make sure that we're putting the good fats in, taking the bad fats out, these hydrogenated oils, because they attach to the cell membrane, they cause cellular congestion, they really attach uh, to even the nervous system and, and cause problems with brain function. And so we have to make sure that we are pulling those bad fats out so that we're not causing cell cellular inflammation in the body. Next is stress. You know, stress is a great destroyer of the body, kind of like sugar. Now, stress will destroy the body in uh, so many ways. It raises up cortisol, which is, you know, just breaking down the body. So we have to make sure people who are under chronic stress on a daily basis, we're really removing that stress. I work with patients all the time that, you know, their life doesn't even seem that complex, but they're very, very stressed. And so I think just with technology and things moving so fast today, it's very much stressing people out. So make sure that if you're someone who's stressed all the time, you're implementing things like mindful meditation and ways to actually just calm yourself, calm your brain and, uh, you know, make yourself just feel better overall. And then all these different issues really cause oxidative stress. Stress. Oxidative stress is causing a lot of free radicals in the body, which is essentially leading to disease. And so we have to make sure that we're actually, you know, pumping our body up with some antioxidants so that we're actually, you know, killing down that oxidative stress and reducing free radicals in the body, ultimately reducing disease. Now, when we look at all these different problems causing this inflammation, then we look at the actual problem that they um, are causing, the disease processes that they're causing in the body. First here is autoimmune conditions. An example would be someone who has rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis of any sort. You know, that's a chronic inflammatory issue as a result of many of these things I just discussed. And then what happens is people get arthritis and they just think, well, this is the way I have to live. And they don't even go and take these different factors out of their lifestyle that's causing the inflammation. They continue to do it and then they'll just, you know, be on a medication that's destroying their liver and kidneys. And, you know, we have to make sure that when we look at autoimmune conditions, whether it's, you know, arthritis, whether it's thyroid issues, we have to make sure that we're reducing inflammation in the body and removing all these different factors. Next big one here is neurological. And you know, we think of neurological conditions many times like MS and Parkinson's, but what we really have to consider is neurological conditions like people who are on antidepressants, people who are having altered brain chemistry and they just can't function properly or feel good on a daily basis. I work out with a lot of people who have brain chemistry issues. And so when we look at these neurological conditions and we look at all the people who are taking uh, different uh, uh, prescriptions and, and medications that are altering brain function, we have to really be aware that inflammation in the brain is a huge issue there. And what I'll do is I did a video on brain inflammation. I'll put that in the description below. And by the way, I do a lot of videos that kind of just focus in on many of these different topics. I will link all the different resources in the description below. Um, next year is mitochondria dysfunction. So when we have cellular inflammation, we can't get good nutrients into the cell. Essentially, the mitochondria also can't function right. And so when we have mitochondrial dysfunction, we have dysfunction of you know the energy process throughout the entire body because the mitochondria produces energy. You know, not only are you gonna have chronic fatigue, but you're gonna have just many different conditions that can come out as a result of this. Next is just disease in general, okay? When we look at all these different diseases, they start with a chronic inflammatory issue that goes on for years, right? We're thinking cancer, we're thinking heart disease, we're thinking diabetes, we're thinking all these different major diseases that people face today start with chronic inflammation. So we have to make sure that we're making good efforts to pull this stuff out of our lifestyle. Next year is fibromyalgia. So, you know, if you're someone who's just in chronic pain all the time, there's a good chance that you have, you know, the problem of fibromyalgia, 
And one of the things I don't like about this diagnosis is many people go and they get diagnosed with fibromyalgia and they're just like, you know, that's the end of it. You know, there's no ideas as to how you start reducing inflammation, how you start reversing fibromyalgia. They just say, well, you have fibromyalgia. So, you know, now live with this. And so when you have fibromyalgia, it's very important to make sure that you're reversing chronic inflammation in the body and um, making uh, drastic steps towards uh, reducing that inflammation because it's going to help you feel better. Okay. And because that fibromyalgia causes a lot of pain and people who have chronic inflammation in the body are just in pain in general, right? They feel pain in their elbow and their knees and their spine and their neck and their, you know, all their joints and then even in the muscles. And so we have to make sure that if you have inflammation in the body, you're reducing it to reduce pain. It's a huge, huge uh, factor for people who are in chronic pain. You got to reduce that inflammation because it's going to make you feel a lot better. So this is what you need to do in order to actually make sure that you're reversing inflammation is start cleaning up these areas of your lifestyle. And once again, I will link in the description below many of the different videos that I did on focusing on these different topics. And when we look at inflammation in the body, when we, when we look at the root cause of a lot of this, we have to make sure that we're going in and we're you know working on healing the cell, reducing cellular inflammation. And I'll put a link to the cell detox series that I did so that you can actually check those out and learn about how we actually go in reverse uh, inflammation by taking out these environmental pollutants. We're actually doing real detox, not some of these different sham green drink products that are on the market, but real cellular detox in order to actually go to the right to the root cause of this issue. And I'll put that in the description. So that wraps this up. Make sure that you're changing your lifestyle in order to reduce inflammation. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, put it here in the comments section below. Now, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel too, because I do tons of great videos that teach you how to improve your health. And then lastly, check out my other videos that teach you how to increase your health on a regular basis. And I will see you in the next video.